In this video, we are looking again at uh, how the cell goes from the genotype information within the DNA to the phenotype, to your traits. And this first part regards transcription, which is reading a gene in DNA and using that information to make RNA. So over the next few weeks, we're going to learn three new biochemical sets of reactions, or sets of biochemical reactions. We are going to start with the reactions of gene expression, and that is transcription and translation, and then we're gonna look at how DNA replicates itself, DNA replication. Now with each new set of biochemical reactions, there is a series of questions that you want to always ask yourself. What's the product of the reaction? What gets made? Since this is a biochemical reaction, it requires an enzyme. What's the name of that enzyme that catalyzes the reaction? Now, remember, the products of each one of these are information-rich polymers, which means there has to be a template. There has to be a source of information that the enzyme is copying. Well, what is that source of information? What is the enzyme reading? Now, because the enzyme has to read something, it has to know where to start, and it has to know where to stop. So where does that enzyme start reading? Where does that enzyme stop reading with regards to that source of information, to the template? Where within a eukaryotic cell does this occur? And how often within that cell does that occur? So these are all the questions that you will ask when you start to learn about each one of these. And I'm not going to fill this in for you. I'll sort of talk about them when we reach them. So again, we're starting with transcription. Now, transcription as you can see in this figure here, takes place within the nucleus of a eukaryotic cell. And it is the process by which this enzyme, RNA polymerase, reads a template, specifically the template strand of DNA. So this single blue strand here is the template that RNA polymerase is reading. And what is it making? It's making RNA, and that's in the red here. So this figure here already allows you to answer several of the questions that we want to ask about this process. Here is the general structure of a gene in eukaryotes, okay? So this is, pretend this is double-stranded. Remember DNA, this is DNA. And this is double stranded. Here's the five prime end of the gene, here's the three prime end of the gene. And what you see is the gene is made up of a promoter. Now the promoter is the part of the gene that tells the RNA polymerase start reading here. Okay. And then you have what are called exons and introns. Okay. This is all a contiguous sequence of DNA here. Now, exons will go on to be part of the mature messenger RNA that goes to the cytoplasm. Introns, however, are going to all be spliced out, and they will not be part of the mature messenger RNA. So these exons, the introns will be spliced out, and these exons will be pasted to one another. And then all the way at the end of a gene, we have something called a polyadenylation signal sequence. Now, this is the sequence within the DNA that tells the RNA polymerase, that tells the enzyme, stop. No long, you don't have to go beyond this sequence here. We are at the end of the gene. So we've got more answers to those important questions right here. Now, here's a problem. DNA is double-stranded. RNA is single-stranded. So when we talk about the gene within DNA, which of the two strands are we talking about? Well, you, first of all, 
you need to have a directionality. You need to have somebody telling you this is the direction of the gene. Um, of the gene. It starts here and it goes in this direction here. You compare that arrow to the two strands of DNA and genes always run from the five prime to the three prime. So you look at the the start of the arrow here, you look at the two strands of DNA, the one strand of DNA that is the five prime at the start of the arrow, the strand of DNA that's three prime at the end of the arrow, that is the gene strand. And we call that the non-template or the coding strand. That is the strand that is going to look like the RNA transcript, except of course for T's um, all the U's will replace the T's. So if we look at this coding strand, C, G, C, T, and we look at the RNA, C, G, C, U, same thing, except for T's and U's, same thing. However, the way in which uh, transcription occurs is the enzyme reads the template strand and writes the reverse complementary. So it's the template strand here that the RNA polymerase is actually going to read. It reads a three prime G and writes a five prime C. It reads a three prime C and it writes a five prime G. Okay. So again, the gene itself, five prime to three prime in the direction of the gene showed to you. That is the strand of DNA that is going to look like the RNA, that, that the RNA is going to look like. But to achieve that, the RNA polymerase must read the other strand, what's called the template strand. And it reads that strand three prime to five prime while writing RNA five prime to three prime. Transcription occurs in eukaryotes in three phases. Initiation okay, is where the RNA polymerase is going to recognize the promoter, separate the two strands, and begin to read the template strand. Elongation, that RNA polymerase is going to start to move along the template strand, reading and writing and reading and writing. And finally, termination. It reaches that polyadenylation sequence, um, polyadenylation signal sequence, and then falls off, and we have our completed RNA transcript. So let's take a look at each one of these in more detail. Here is the prokaryotic promoter. That promoter is not going to be transcribed. It will not be part of the RNA. And one of the important sequences within a promoter is called the Tata box because it's the Tata box that various transcription factors, specifically the Tata binding protein, binds to. So you have all of these transcription factors that recognize and bind the promoter, and once they're bound there, then RNA polymerase binds. They recruit RNA polymerase. Okay, so it's these transcription factors that first bind to that promoter. They, these are various proteins that, that bind the promoter and then when bound, recruit RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase binds and separates the two strands of DNA and then recognizes and starts reading that template strand. Notice it reads the template strand three prime to five prime and it writes the new strand of RNA five prime to three prime. Those are important details. And then it begins in the open complex here. The two strands are separated. It begins to move. And that starts elongation. So elongation, it has escaped the promoter. That RNA transcript is being made and it is moving towards the polyadenylation signal sequence. And what it's doing is it is reading the template strand, T, and writing the RNA, A. Reading the template strand, A, and writing the reverse complementary, U. And it just keeps doing that over and over and over again. Finally, 
it reaches the poly A signal sequence. Okay, the A A T A A A sequence. Well, it would look like this in the template strand T T A T T T, and it would be read and it would be written within the RNA. Okay, so the poly A signal sequence does appear within the RNA, and when it does appear there. A specific endonuclease recognizes it. This is an enzyme that cuts RNA, recognizes this poly A signal sequence, and cuts the RNA, and the RNA polymerase falls off, and that ends transcription. <clears throat> so the next step then is this newly made RNA is called a pre- mRNA. It's not completely mature yet. It has several processing events that must occur. And those processing events will be the topic of the next video.